Right, you know, you know like we had rain man. equality on Wednesday, I want a rain race today. Please don't. Please yes. I will delete my, my PC. Crack up, he just drags the recycle bin into the recycle <laughs> bin, yeah of course, yeah. Fantastic. Please don't. Why not? I will leave What is game. your opposition to the wet I weather, am. man? We, we're both <laughs> from the UK. Racing, we're we're, no we're both from the UK, man. We should be used to the wet weather. Please, see if this is like a boring... Would full dry, please, man. Please, I'm praying. Why do you like boring, please. man? It's so unfun. Make when it see, dry. You know the most depressing thing is seeing sunshine, 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 sunshine. It isn't. That it is, is the best boring. thing about it. It's just not. Please. It's dry. boring. <laughs> see if it's pouring wet, I will laugh so hard. <laughs> I have GG's. Oh, my God! Oh, I've practiced for dry the whole time and it's raining. Sensation. Hey everyone, hope you're doing well, I'm Lucas and welcome back to another F123 League racing Thanks. video on the channel and today we are back with WOR here in Brazil, just like in PSGL in Brazil actually. On screen now we have the grid lineup that we had uh, for this race and without further ado we're going to jump straight into Q1 and, and I mean, for those of you who saw the race on Wednesday at PSGL, you might notice it's very similar conditions and that's because this was a very unusual qualifying and the fact that the weather basically played out in almost identical fashion to the week before uh to the sorry, the, the previous brazil league race like the timings were similar the speed at which things dried up was maybe slightly different but the conditions were scarily similar so we had basically a second bite of the cherry to um yeah go for um go for a bit of wet driving so here we are now first lap of q1 uh, heading out pretty late in the session once again because um, yeah, we're pretty confident in sort of jumping out and just going for it uh, in the wet conditions as we make a big mistake there though, um, coming into the middle sector, which we'll need to gain time on on our next attempt. But um, yeah, the, the conditions were getting drier as the session was going on. Um, or not drier, sorry, but like maybe, maybe marginally drier, maybe? Um, but still raining, like, so basically it was just like, the track was just going to get a bit quicker and quicker and quicker as the entire session progressed. Um, so yeah, we headed out with enough time for two timed laps, so that was out lap, push, cool lap, push, um, and then that would be our qualifying. So this was our first lap on the board, straight into P3, which was very promising given that we did our best Tokyo Drift impression uh, in the middle sector. So heading into sector one this time, maybe a bit hesitant uh, on the on the first initial apex but not getting a good release out of turn 2 there so we actually go even slower through turn, uh, through sector 1 which was um, quite poor but heading now into sector 2 getting the car fed in nicely and we get a better exit and start to creep up a tiny little bit on our delta as we head towards the middle sector where we know we've basically got some guaranteed lap time sitting waiting for us pushing the car a little bit more through there but then yeah, getting the car nicely to the apex now, and the apex just sort of gained us so much time. And then a bit more smooth in the exit here as well. We're bordering on two tenths up. Let the car rotate, wind in the lock just as we peak to the apex. And then you're just fighting the car on traction, just trying to get to full power. This corner is such a demanding one on the rear end traction in the wet. Final corner nicely to the apex, planting the power now. And we have an extra three tenths to improve on which should see is more than comfortably through Q1. Um, yeah, on just two runs on the intermediate. So, yeah, relatively well executed. A pretty poor sector one, but more than good enough to see us through um, by the time everyone had set their laps. Um, so, yeah, Danny, our teammate, managed to get through as well, along with uh, Otis, our junior dev, uh, here at McLaren Shadow. Uh, but now skipping on to Q2. As you can see here, it is now nearly fully dry and the reason I say nearly is as you can see I tried to commit into the corner and I just didn't quite have the grip. Yeah, it's still quite damp actually so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I, I pushed as if it was drier than it was so yeah it's all good. I'm just gonna push on in lap. But it's gonna be mm -hmm. one shot qualifying. Yeah. I'm four tenths up on my in lap. Yeah, there we go! <laughs> the third one grip was so bad. Purple first sector. Here oh, go. I'm cooking. I'm seven <laughs> tenths up. And I've got no Frank. battery. So after some outlap heroics, or inlap heroics, I should say. Here we are 
about to start our final run of Q2, but look at the traffic. Oh my God. Everybody oh my trying to get the the best track possible. Um, and as you can see, we've only got 22 seconds left now. So we need to be really careful on time. We have maybe a second or two in hand, which we thankfully knew roughly for how much time we needed Definitely coming into the last sense. corner. Um, but yeah, the track was now fully dry and this was now a one-shot qualifying to get into Q3. So here we are, three seconds on the <laughs> three seconds on the line to start our lap. Um, yeah, not um, yeah, we are the last car across the line to start our lap. You can see we've literally got Thomas right ahead of us because of how compact it all ended up being. But heading into sector two now, getting to the apex, and immediately we can just see how much time we're gaining. This is literally. Yeah, all we need to do is just drive a nice, clean, smooth lap. There's no point in doing any heroics to, you know, try and go for an outrageous lap. It was just try and keep a nice, clean run, get the car into these apexes, hit the marks, and let the car do the work. Just let the lap time come to me. And, yeah, so far, lap has been very clean, which is what you like to see. Heading now down to the final corner. Or the final actual corner. Get into that apex relatively nicely on the power, and we should. Well, we've got purple yeah, sector one and two, purple sector one and two, and this should be, oh, as Anton just is. said, uh, pretty easily through into Q3. So, yeah, one shot ah. volley basically done and dusted, and here we are now heading in to Q3 for our first of three attempts to try and get pole position. To so heading into turn one, maybe not quite feeding the car in as well as we would have liked. Um, into one, but we had a relatively clean execution through turn two. So DRS open and heading into turn four now for the first time in Q3, breaking just around 100 meters, not quite getting to the apex, but then just losing the rear completely. Just couldn't get the car in, asked too much of the rear on the way out, and um, that is going to be pretty detrimental to our overall lap time. So this lap is already partially in the bin. We're taking the car, just not quite getting the rear settled though. Um, and this whole section was just a bit of a miss after that, um, yeah, that turn four. Um, not quite getting the bite on the rear into there as well. So yeah, the lap, this lap overall was, you know, pretty much in the bin through the last corner. To, got to the apex pretty nicely. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, you can see me almost laughing just because, yeah, that lap kind of went wrong in every way imaginable. Um, so yeah, we've got still two more attempts though to try and better our efforts. Oh, a, um, so yeah, here we are now on to our second attempt here in Q3, breaking just past the 50 meter board. Actually, sorry, let me correct myself. Just before the 50 meter board or whatever it was. But yeah, not quite getting as good a turn two this time. A better turn one, but a worse turn two. But we're only marginally down on our delta. So we just need to try and get a clean execution through T4. This time though, I had the opposite issue, breaking fractionally too early and getting an invalidation on the exit of turn four, which is super sensitive um, on this year's game, I feel. It's such an easy thing to do when you're pushing on the limit. Um, and it's insanely frustrating when you look at the delta on this lap because this lap was actually coming together and that's just the that's just the way it is you know like we're on a lap we're two tenths up at the moment heading into the last corner purple sector two not quite getting the last corner but even then a two to two point two two up on our delta so yeah absolutely infuriating because that lap was actually going to put us very comfortably on provisional pole. So here we are now for our last attempt, but coming through turn two, we just cannot get the car settled. So yeah, every session, through, every, sorry, every lap through turn sector one, it just got worse and worse and worse. And now I've got, I've been, I'm left with it all to do, heading through the rest of the laps. So heading into sector two now, not getting to the apex. So again, just every lap, not managing to put the car in the same place every time. It was incredibly frustrating and incredibly tricky just to put it all together heading through sector two now getting into the apex maybe a fraction too early but at least it was nice and clean through here trying to keep the car nice and tight getting on the power now and now we've got this right hander to negotiate down to third gear nice and clean through here though so we just need to try and string together a good last corner and we could maybe salvage this qualifying lap but we break just a fraction too early which completely messes up that corner and we lose so much time in our last sector and 
this, a yeah, is going to round out what has been a miserable qualifying for us. One of the worst qualifying qualifying qualifying's I think year. that I've driven maybe in the last oh year or two, God, just in general Q3. It was a very poor execution. Um, and yeah, that invalid lap we done was possibly pole, which is my fault. In fact, no, I think it actually would have been pole. So that's what I get for, yeah, making mistakes. That's the, pay, the price you pay. However, can't do anything about it now. It's all about getting our heads down and into the race. We're on the hards, five red lights on your screen, and away we go. Getting a pretty decent initial launch, but then getting a better second phase, trying to get the power down, looking to the outside of Tom Manley as he head into turn one. He goes up the inside of Alvaro. I'm trying to manage the cars on the inside. We had Esteban Puki having a look into turn one, but we are through now, through the opening sequence, and now we are just trying to manage um, yeah, just try and manage this initial phase of the race because as you're going to see here, um, we have a variety of different strategies here at play. We have Shinaka Clay as well behind on the soft tyre, so there is quite a lot going on and well, the, and is yet to unfold in this, in this race. So yeah, defending a little bit on the inside from the cars behind, also trying to feint a move on Tom, see if he was, um, yeah, just trying to see if you can force a driver into mistake. The cars behind are going side by side, the two soft runners really going at it. We're just hoping that we don't get tagged in all of this, um, as the soft at the start of the race have a monumental grip advantage, but not for a long period of time, you know, they drop off quite quickly and relative to the hard, so yeah, yeah, these soft runners have got got it all to do, whereas we need to try and, as much as your racing instinct doesn't want to listen, you've got to almost like pick your fight, like you don't want to waste your resources, your energy, you know, on these soft runners who are all going to filter towards um, P1 with the grip advantage, as we just try our best not to fight Alfie, um, who goes around the outside there, there's no point in us messing this up, and now we have our teammate Danny behind us on the soft, so we don't want to fight at all, we want to try and, you know, if anything, let him go. Um, so on the exit of here, we are going to do exactly that. We're going to pull to the left, let Danny go, and also let him chase ahead with the other soft runners and try and, um, yeah, try and basically carve a way for us to, yeah, go for through the hard runners as well, but we had Shinaka click on for a huge dive bomb on Tom, which now allows Danny to have a look at Tom Manley ahead of us. Um, which is now going to set off a chain event of um, all sorts of chaos. So Danny now having a look Such at Tom Manley, not man. quite getting the, the move done. We have Esteban Puki behind on the hards, but I believe we are P4 at the moment of the hard runners in this train. But we have a look now up the inside of Tom Manley. Danny getting the move Flip up the out. inside into the, the actual last corner in some ways. Um, but yeah, DOS. E oh, sorry, ERS getting deployed. Danny, Danny, outside, outside, I try and tell Danny outside. to go the outside, but he accidentally went to the inside because I wanted to try and cover oh, off um, Tom's line. Um, but we managed to go around the outside, but we actually get completely shoved here by Tom, um, which was... Um, yeah, I was not happy about whatsoever in the moment. Um, I don't know whether he meant that to do that or not because it, I was actually the car ahead going into that corner, but now it's three wide. We're trying to have you know, watch out for Ruben Pedrenio on the exit, and then behind all sorts of chaos unfolds as I believe two cars behind um, behind us got tied together and sort of contact modelled each other uh, or one of the cars into the wall, which um, was super crazy. Um, yeah. Um, initially, I was worried that I was actually involved in that, but I actually wasn't. It was actually two cars behind having their own um, their own collision, but that was all. A, a, a consequence of the absolute chaos that unfolded um, from, you know, turn one and two and stuff. So, um, yeah. Thankfully, we managed to keep everything intact, but skipping onto lap eight now, Ruben Soft started to dip off a little bit, and that is us going to make an opportune move up Shows into um, P7, and we are now P3 of the hard runners. Uh, and this is where the long game starts to box. come into play. Shinaka Clay now boxing off of the soft tyres. We have Nicholas Longy ahead of us on the hard tyres and we have Fabrizio Donoso a bit further up the road on the hards. As Danny Moreno, our teammate, now boxes off the softs along with, I believe, Alvaro Caraton as well. Um, so yeah, this was all about patience for us. You can see I've charged up the battery because I knew we were going to catch back up to the lead train no matter what. Alfie um, and yeah, now the last of the soft runners, Alfie Butcher, diving off of that tyre onto a set of mediums, and now this is where our strategy comes into effect. We're just going to sit in this train, we've charged up the energy, Thomas Ronald now on the hard tyres has boxed, 
and now on to lap 19. Uh, we have our uh, junior dev Otis Lawrence behind um, boxing now as well. Uh, Nico Longhi on the hards takes the lead for Bixion and also at the end of lap 20 now decides to dive into the box. So you can just see here all the different strategies kicking into life, kicking into play. And now we are uh, extending still. Uh, we're on lap 21 and we wanted... The ultimate goal here was to maximise our tyres for the, the end of the race. Um, and we're going to be boxing at the end of this lap, so we're going to overtake Nic Nicholas Longay now, uh, heading into turn four. And yeah, we're going to be boxing at the end of this lap. Um, obviously, you don't want to extend way too far to the point where you're completely out of contention, but what happens typically here at Brazil is, um, yeah, we have... Uh, a big train of cars of multi strategies right. that form and People it slows the progress of people that are somewhat on my strategy so the idea was to go a bit longer and let that um, oh, chaos for the others um, bring us into play and by the but we would catch them up and basically have better tyres and be in the same place on the track so here we are now lap 22 exit in the pits it's time to go hunting and try and make a heck of a lot of positions up to try and win this race. We were confident our pace all the way through, and just in yeah, general at Brazil. So. Yep. That's home. So yeah, here we are, lap 22, and the, the we are in P18 at the moment as Tomic now boxes at the end of this lap. I think with maybe a bit of damage for Bitzio Donoso who boxed one lap earlier than us, setting the fastest lap of the race. But the thing that's going to bring us into play is the fact that everybody is going to get coiled back up into one train once the people that are on our silo strategy catch up the people that are on the softs in the first stint and then it's going to bring everybody into play and we're going to have the best trials out of absolutely it's everybody hilarious. skipping on to the middle of lap 23 now we dive up the inside of Matthias who was struggling a little bit on his mediums and that was um, yeah another place in the books up to P15 now as we have Iker Vena ahead of us now um, and yeah, he. Uh, the idea was to try and cut through the pack with as minimal ERS as possible as well, because we knew we were going to need it by the end of this race. As for Bitsu and also set the fastest lap of the race once more. And now heading into turn one for us now. Skipping on to lap uh, 25. And now we have Tom Manley ahead of us now. Um, and yeah, the idea was to just try and carve our way through but you can see here Tom I don't really know why but just decided to use a lot of energy to defend here um, which I don't think really helped either of us because we just that sort of wasted resource for not very much gain uh, but no less we are now onto lap 26 and this is where it's all gonna start kicking off we're right in the train as you can see ahead of us, we're going up the inside now of Josh, who's going side by side with Thomas, and this is where, you know, this is where the fun begins. Going up the inside of Thomas now, using a bit of energy, making two positions in the space of two corners, and yeah, now up into the top 10 on lap 26. Jed Norgrove ahead of us now, flashing with ERS, so we want to try and discard of him as quickly as possible. It's critical that we are decisive with all of us, so we go up the inside, but Jed sort of just, yep, that's clean defense. I don't know if he just forgets I'm there. Um, but yeah, going up the inside, thankfully managing to hang around the outside and f more importantly, thankfully not picking up any damage as Otis now goes up the inside of Ismail Fassi ahead of us. And we are now into P9 and the leader is, um, of this train, sorry, is we, I think we have... Yeah, I think the leader is Alvaro Caraton, as you can see on the minimap, that little blue dot that is a little bit ahead of the hash that's in P2 right now. So, yeah, that's what we've got to get to. So we've got to start cutting our way through the field now. Um, we're not going to get this race in any way, shape or form uh, easy. So now, heading up the inside of Ismail Fassi, who's defence to the inside, but we managed to get it up the inside, hang it around the outside. He had no ERS, and we thankfully get that move done. That was a pretty sweet move um, to move ourselves up into P8. Now we have Otis and Shanaka, who were going side by side there, but Shanaka blinking with ERS, so we send it up the inside, get it stopped nicely on the apex. Shanaka leaves us plenty of room, so big respect for you know, not closing the door on us and we managed to just use our grip advantage and take another position up to P7. Um, so yeah, all good racing there, um, which is what you love to see. Now we have Alfie Butcher and Otis Lawrence going side by side, heading into the final section, or the final set, I should say, of this track. We have a little look at the outside, but we think smarter of it because the last thing we want to do is get shoved off for, you know, a bit of a nothing move as we now 
deploy a bit of our energy, go up the inside of Alfie. Flashing. I'm just trying to use oh. as minimal ERS as humanly possible. Yep. We're now on the inside of Alfie. We're going to get the move into turn one, but unfortunately, Otis goes into the back of Ruben ahead of us, which then cons Constantinos us into the back of him, and we actually take a big, big whack, but somehow we do not get damage. I have no idea how we managed to avoid getting front wing damage there. Um, yeah, the front wing gods were on my side there because that was extremely sketchy. Um, but yeah, now into the top five with um, Fabrizio Adonoso, as you can see ahead of us, who pitted one lap before us, just ahead on the road as we go up the inside of Ruben Vergenio now, and Whoa. we get this super weird contact model moment there. Um, yeah, it was super was weird, it was super grabby, I don't understand what on earth happened there really, but now into the into the top four, and yeah, now behind our teammate Danny, who we will now manage to get past going into turn four, which was, um, yeah, great teamwork, you know, returning the favour from earlier in the race, making sure that we lost as minimal time as possible, and now on to lap 29, we have P1 in our sights just up the road, so we take P2 ahead of Fabrizio Donoso now, as we skip on now onto lap 30, Jesus and now P1 and uh, with Alvaro Caraton, who had like, I think six or seven lap holder tyres now, was just in range, who, yeah, was going to, I guess, try and hang on, but ultimately, I think Fab and I just had such an advantage on tyres, it was going to be very, very difficult for him to, you know, have much of a play here, so heading on to uh, lap 32, the, se the second DRS straight, up the inside, and into the lead of this race, after what has been many, many overtakes, and yeah, skipping to the end of this lap, now you can see Fabrizio also finding his way through, so... Yeah, it's now going to be, for the remainder of this race, a direct dogfight with Fabrizio Donoso. His laps are only one lap older, which, yeah, th thankfully isn't, um, no, sorry, it isn't actually um, as big a, as a gap as we would have liked, obviously, but this means that we both have a pretty decent shot on this last lap to make something happen. So here we are now, just making sure that we have enough ERS to ward off an attack and this is where things start to get tricky because we need to sort of put our eggs in a basket. Do we want to keep track position heading into the last straight or do we want to try and be the one that has the DRS to the line? Fabrizio now blasts his energy and his DRS going into turn four. We opt to use a tiny little bit just to keep Fabrizio using and now we are sitting in P2 right behind Fabrizio with all but half a lap basically left in this race to decide who's going to win. We've got 34% battery. I had no idea how much ERS Fab was able to regenerate in the few laps that he was spent behind me um, in the, this closing phase of the race. But yeah, it was all about trying not to make a single mistake. Trying to make sure that we were able to... Yeah, trying to make sure that we were able to hang on for dear life and get the best possible exit here coming out of the last final proper corner on this track and we are blasting the energy now coming to the line and we're just going to wait for the ERS to start blinking for Fabrizio so we get the DRS, ERS, Slipstream, the whole lot, slingshot oh, pass and that's going to be P1. Come on. Oh, been hell. So close man. Let's go. What the hell is he doing? Ooh. I'm there, hello. Nice. Like can't oh, be awesome, so Ruby, such a twist. Years, Lucas. To call. Oh. My god. How did Jano have that straight line speed at the end? How much did he save? So, that is one of the most chaotic races that I have probably done in recent time. I mean, I thought chaos, I thought PSGL was chaos, but that was a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of overtaking. I mean, we were in P18 after, you know, we made our pit stop, and yeah, we managed to make this alternate strategy. Um, if you can even call it that, um, work on this occasion. Yeah, made up for an abysmal qualifying, um, made our strategy work, made a heck of a lot of overtakes, and yeah, took the dub right at the death on the line. Um, thankfully, playing our cards right to, you know, wait until the last straight and save our energy for it. Um, but yeah, 
appreciate the love, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this race, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, yeah, please like and subscribe if you want to see more of this content. I'm trying to, you know, punch out these league racing videos, as I know you guys really enjoy watching them. Um, so yeah, appreciate the love. It means the world to me, honestly. I mean, I don't think you guys actually... I know you, you probably hear us say it, but I don't think you actually realise, you know, how much support actually means to us. So genuinely, I appreciate the love. It means a lot. And uh, yeah, I will catch you guys in the next video um, for when we do our next league race. So take care, everybody. I love you all. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care of yourselves. I love you all. And see you guys next time. Ciao.